In our last video, we took a look at how to interpret the regression coefficients when you use a FET coding. We saw that the predicted values for people in any of the groups turned out to be the mean for that group. And the coefficients indicated the difference between the mean of the corresponding group and the mean of all the various group means. At the end of the video, I suggested that you try to calculate the, the predicted score for individuals in the intensive curriculum group on your own, and then interpret the t-test and 95% confidence interval before starting this video. Now, if you haven't done that yet, I suggest giving it a try and then restarting this video. All right? But assuming you did, let's see what you should have got for your answers. All right? Did you get a predicted score of 505.342? Now, both the math and the language curriculum effect codes would be zero, right? So those coefficients would just drop out. The intensive curriculum effect code would be 1, right? So the equation would reduce to 509.477 minus 4.135. Uh, note the negative sign on that coefficient. If we do that math, that solves to 505.342. And in case you're wondering, yeah, it's equal to the mean of the intensive curriculum group. No surprise there at this point. All right. Now, just like before, we interpret the value of the coefficient for the effect code as being the difference between the intensive curriculum group and the mean of the means of all the different curricula. So it tells us that the mean for those in the intensive curriculum was 4.135 points lower than the mean of the means of all of the different curricula. But that's not very much. Uh, yes, it's the difference we see in our sample, but maybe there's, there's no difference out in the population. And this minor difference is just random sampling noise. Now, in fact, that's exactly what the t-test suggests, doesn't it? Our t with 396 degrees of freedom was equal to negative 0.284, which gave us a p-value of 0.776. No statistically significant difference. In other words, if the mean for the intensive curriculum in the population was exactly the same as the mean of the, all of the means in the population, 77.6% of the time we would have just randomly got a difference of 4.135 points or more in our sample. So that could just easily be some chance variation, couldn't it? Now, if we look at the confidence interval, we see that we're 95% confident that the true difference between the intensive curriculum mean and the mean of the means is, is somewhere between negative 32.736 and positive 24.466. That's the range we would expect to see the true difference in the population. And zero is kind of close to the middle of that range, isn't it? So again, notice that that point estimate of 4.135 seems a little squishy. There's a lot of potential error in that point estimate. Okay? Now, let's move on to the final group, students in the standard curriculum. Why don't you pause the video and calculate the predicted score for someone in the standard curriculum. Just calculate the predicted score. Don't worry about t-tests or the confidence intervals, okay? We'll get to that later. But 
Think hard about this one before you do it, all right? Restart the video when you're ready or if you try but, but feel stumped. Did you get 460.1? If you didn't, don't feel too bad. This is one where a lot of students make a mistake the first time they try it. Remember, one of the groups does not get assigned an effect code. The, the math focused curriculum got its own effect code, as did the language focused curriculum and the intensive curriculum. But the standard curriculum didn't get an effect code. And what do we do for that group in effect coding? Each of the effect codes gets a value of minus one not zero. Remember, they'd be zero in dummy coding, but in effect coding, they're all minus ones. And that's what makes the other coefficients a comparison to the mean of the means instead of a referent group or some comparison group. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, so plugging in the minus ones, we get 509.477 plus 31.416 times negative 1 plus 22.096 times negative 1 minus 4.135 times negative 1. That solves to 509.477 minus 31.416 minus 22.096 plus 4.135, which solves to 460.1, all right? <laughs> and yes, if you're wondering that even with all those minus one values for the effect codes, we still get the predicted score that's equal to the mean of that group within rounding error. <laughs> we just, wow, I love that, all right? Now, what about a t-test that tells us whether this group mean, the, the mean for the standard curriculum, is significantly different from the mean of the means? Remember, our mean of the means was 509.477. So it certainly seems that the mean for the standard curriculum is a lot lower. But notice we got the, the mean for the standard curriculum by using all three of the effect codes with minus ones for their values. There is no coefficient that provides us a test of whether the difference between the standard curriculum and the mean of the means is equal to zero. So while we can calculate what the mean for this group is, we can't readily test whether it's significantly different from the mean of the means. It looks a lot lower, but based on this, we don't know if it's statistically significantly lower, right? And similarly, without a coefficient, we also don't have a standard error that we can use to calculate a confidence interval. So we can't calculate a confidence interval for the difference between the standard curriculum and the mean of the means either. Bummer. So if you actually are interested in knowing whether that, that last group, in this case our standard curriculum, is significantly different from the mean of the means, what do you do? Well, the easiest thing, given statistical software, is just create a different set of effect codes. And instead of making the standard curriculum group the one coded with all minus ones, just make one of the other curriculum groups the one with all the minus one values. All you do then is rerun the analysis. Each coefficient will still compare its respective group against the, the mean of the means, but now one of those coefficients will be for the standard curriculum, along with the appropriate t-test and the confidence interval. All right, great. Now before wrapping up, a couple of final points. First, notice I've been using the cumbersome language of mean of the means throughout our discussion of effect coding. 
Effect coding compares different groups to the unweighted mean of the group means. Four groups, you sum up the four means for those four groups and you divide by four, right? But there is a special case where effect coding will also be comparing the different groups to the gram mean. And that's when the sample sizes for each group are exactly the same. Now, there's nothing tricky about that. It's still the mean of the means. It's just that when all the groups are the same size, then the mean of the means is the same value as the grand mean. But I prefer the more cumbersome mean of the means language because that's always true. Second, we've used both dummy and effect coding to exactly estimate the, the different group means. That actually works in this case because we have a very simple model with no other predictors, just the dummy or effect codes. But when you include additional predictor variables, they won't actually be the observed means anymore. They'll be statistically adjusted means that control for or remove the effect of those other variables. And the coefficients won't be the actual observed differences between the corresponding group and, and the different uh, and the referent group or the, the mean of the means anymore. The coefficients will be the difference controlling for or removing the effect of those other variables. Think back to our videos on statistical control and, and removing the effect of other variables. For example, you can think of the adjusted means and coefficients as reflecting what you would expect to see if everyone was somehow exactly the same on all of the other variables in the model. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of where we're going in later videos. Now, after saying that, to delve a little deeper, I should note that there are a few situations where the results actually won't change when you add additional variables. Uh, for example, if, and it's a big if, those additional variables are all, all of them, uncorrelated with the categorical variable. Again, think back to the videos on statistical control, maybe particularly the Venn diagrams when we were looking at uncorrelated predictors. But as a rule of thumb, it helps to remember that this gives you the original unadjusted means when the categorical variable is the only variable in the model. But when additional variables are included, the coefficients and the predicted means for each group are adjusted for those additional variables. With that, let's wrap up our discussion of categorical variables in a multiple regression model. Now, there are other coding strategies beyond dummy and effect codes. There's a technique called orthogonal coding that makes the coefficients a, a series of special types of questions regarding different groups. <laughs> There's even a technique called nonsense coding. Uh, but that's a different conversation, a different variable, a different video. The key here is that whichever technique you use, the F test in which you enter all of the dummy or effect codes or orthogonal codes or nonsense codes as a set is the test for the effect of that categorical variable. It tests whether there is an overall curriculum or race ethnicity or nationality or program effect. And the T test for the different individual coefficients test specific differences between the groups. Do students in this specific curriculum score higher than students in that curriculum? That's evaluated by the t-test for the appropriate regression coefficient, okay? Now with that, let's end here, okay? 
I'll see you in the next video.